Thank you for having me. My name is Kyle Pepperman. I'm one of the technicians at the Downey's Institute. If you want a clam seed, I'm one of the guys to talk to. Uh, today I'm going to talk, uh, well first I should start by saying uh, thanking the people that helped me with this. Uh, Brian, of course, for teaching me what a clam is and how to grow them. Uh, Justin Lewis, this good looking guy over here who helped me uh, put all these experiments out and bring them in, as well as uh, Ben Ellis and Cody Jordae who are manning the hatchery today in our, in our absence. So today I'm going to be talking about work that we did in Downey's Maine with six towns. Um, all of these towns have purchased seed from the Downey's Institute, some for the first time, some are returning customers, and the reason is that as someone who takes clam orders, I often ask, well, what are you going to do with them? And oftentimes I hear, well, we don't have nets, we're going to go out at high tide and throw them off the side of a boat. Well, I take a lot of time and pride in producing really nice babies, and I hate to see them getting eaten. So after hearing this for a while, we said, you know, we got we got to provide a little bit of service after the sale and make sure that people are, are you know doing things right, protecting them from the predators. So we sought some funding uh, through the Broadridge Fund, administered through the uh, Maine Community Foundation, and approached the towns and said, you know what, if you can dedicate a hundred thousand of the clams that you're already planning on buying, it'll cost a twenty-five hundred dollar investment. Uh, we can provide you with nets. We can provide you with help putting them out selecting sites, um, taking the nets back off, sampling the, the nets to show that one predator exclusion is worth doing, looking at what survival rates are and growth rates, as well as natural recruitment. Everyone was, was all for it, sure, free help, we love it. So we designed a very small experiment um, with these 100,000 clams. This is what it would look like from, from the sky. It's a very simple block design with five blocks. In each block, there's one plot that did not get a net. 5,000 seed thrown down, that's 30 per square foot. And then in each block, there were three that were netted. Exactly the same, 5,000 clams thrown down, net put over top of them. This happened in uh, April and May of 2017. We walked away. We gave them the instructions that you need to come back out and make sure, one, that the edges and corners of the net stay down. You need to come back periodically every month and make sure that there's nothing growing on the net because if they become impeded, they're, they're death traps. Um, and then we came back in November um, and we pulled the nets off, so this is what it looks like on the ground. We took samples. So from each of the unmetted plots, we took five core samples using a number 10 coffee can, very simple. Um, and then in each block, we selected one of the nets at random, very random, and took the same amount of samples. So from every town, we have 25 core samples from unnetted plots and 25 from netted plots. And I will say, in the towns of uh, Steuben and Gouldsboro, as you heard this morning, we had some help from the Sumner uh, Memorial High School students. A lot of hands make a lot of work uh, much easier, so we're really, really fortunate, and it's a great educational opportunity for the kids. So after we get those core samples back to the lab, we can spray all the mud out and we have a story. This is the story. Um, what happened? Some of them were death and destruction, some of them were just beautiful, beautiful clams. We can take these and measure them. Um, and we always know what the hatchery clams are because they lay a distinct mark on their shell. It's, it's very unique. It makes this type of, uh, of work much easier because you can always identify your babies from, from those that Mother Nature are naturally giving you and we can measure these and determine growth rates from that. And from that, we can make one of these. Um, thankfully, uh, in addition from Brian teaching me how to grow clams, he is a statistical wizard, uh, so he can, he can make something like this. Uh, and what we see is that from all of our sites combined, 150 core samples under nets and 150 core samples not under nets, 60% on average of the netted plots, 60% of the clams lit of the hatchery clams, and less than 10% of the ones in the unnetted plots lit. So, you know, take home here, if you're not putting nets over top of your seed, you are really, you know, not getting the results that, that you want to see. Um, when we break it down by town, we can see that, that there were winners and there were losers. Um, the town of Millbridge uh, statistically had over 100% survival. They were very high in the intertidal, um, which is going to decrease the amount of predation on them, uh, but also decrease the amount of growth that they had. Uh, the town of Pembroke in far eastern Maine had 94% survival. Really, really great. Not a single live clam under the uh, unnetted plots there. But you also see some that are, that are pretty, pretty low. Um, the town of Goldsboro and the town of Machiasport. 
And when we arrived at the site to sample those, well, the town of Goldsboro, most of the nets were, were up on one end. Um, so they hadn't been properly checked and, you know, the crabs got in there and just had a great time. The town of Machiasport, we have, a, we have kind of a question mark. Because of a massive windstorm uh, that took place in the fall, we went back there and all the nets were gone. Um, so we scoured the shore to, to collect them. Uh, so, but in each one of those cases, <coughs> the shells tell us just as much story as the live clams. They're all crunched up, crab damage. So in addition to uh, survivorship, we can look at growth. So absolute growth here, that's how much they grew in, in that, that uh, four month, five month growing season. And on average, across all the sites, three quarters of an inch growth, not too shabby, uh, for a final size of uh, one and a quarter inches. So if that holds true again this following year, statistically, um, we'll have you know, harvestable clams uh, across the sites. But when we break it down by the sites, you can see that there is, there is quite a bit of difference. Uh, Gouldsboro, super growth, uh, just, just shy of a one inch growth. So, you know, they're looking at an 18 month product at that particular site um, that they live. Um, the town of Millbridge, because we were so high in the intertidal, has, has lower growth, uh, as well as the town of Machiasport. So you can see site selection is incredibly important as far as uh, growth and survivorship goes. So what about the wild clams? Uh, these nets are just sitting out there as, as harbors to protect clams from, from predators. And uh, we're able to go through and uh, count and measure all the wild clams. And you know this is the picture that's painted. Under the netted plots across all sites, over 100 wild clams per square foot in the netted plots with pathetically low numbers in the unnetted plots. Um, the green crabs are coming in, they are wreaking havoc on them, and you never, ever see them. Uh, when we break it down by the towns, we get a very huge story. Gouldsboro, terrible survivorship of hatchery clams due to uh, crab predation, but they had a monster set. Um, over, over 500 per square foot wild clams still surviving at the end of the year. They, they satiated the predators, they simply could not eat them all. Um, when we remove them from the equation and look, Pembroke, also great success, 100 per square foot, zero in the unnetted. Um, and then the rest of the towns, not, not quite as good, pretty, pretty low, but you know, some, there, there's still something there. So this really brings us to a question of you know, what, what, how do we select our sites? And in addition to the large scale experiment we, in each town, we set out two studies at different sites um, and I'm going to use uh, Millbridge as an example of, in this particular case, uh, but we did this at all six sites. And I asked them to select two different plot, uh, two different sites. And at each site, I deployed 15 of these six-inch plant pots, like you might buy a basil plant in at a nursery. Um, went out to the site, filled them with mud, put 12 live hatchery clams in them, sunk them down, put a net over them. They're all protected. We're giving them the best possible opportunity to grow and live. Walked away came back in November, collected them, washed the mud out. Again, we have a story, we have growth, we have survivorship, we have wild clams. And from that, we're able to, to make one of these, and we see that, well, geez, this site off of Bar Island had 83% survivorship. That's pretty good, uh, compared to this one in Flat Bay, which isn't that far away from it. Um, but, you know, if, if I'm going to select a site to invest in, certainly the Bar Island site is looking more attractive to me. So let's look at growth. Bam. Man, those ones at Bar Island grew crazy. Um, so absolute growth is over here, and I apologize, this is in um, uh, the metric system. Uh, 25 millimeters is one inch. So the clams at Bar Island grew over an inch in one five month period for a final length of 1.6 inches. Um, that particular site looks very attractive for uh, an 18 month product. Um, and that sounds a lot better than, than this uh, very pathetic, less than, less than half inch growth at Flat Bay. Um, so in addition, we, we see wild clams that's, that settle into these. And you know, statistically, the ones in Flat Bay had an average higher uh, number per square foot. But there was a lot of crab damage at that particular site. Um, some of the pots had zero, some of them had 40. So you know. The growth and survivorship of the hatchery clams is enough to say 
Far Island. Far Island's the place, and uh, I'm very thankful that the town of Millbridge uh, took my advice, and that's where we're going to be seeding this coming year. Um, so to close this out, I, I want to thank the people involved in the different towns um, that helped to organize volunteers, place seed orders, apply for permits. Um, these folks are what makes successful uh, shelter programs happen because they can uh, nudge people in, in different directions. And uh, it really makes uh, my job a lot easier. So I'm thankful for that. Um, and that's it. Uh, you know, if, if anyone has questions, please uh, visit us at uh, downeastinstitute.org. If your town that wants to invest in seed, uh, has been thinking about it, have questions, please give us a call. Let us know. Um, we're spawning clams right now. So we'll be there for you.